Hello and welcome to Vienna, Austria. I hope you want to see what Vienna is like because that's what this video is going to be. This video is going to show you some of the sights in Vienna, but mostly it's going to be about what it's like to travel in Vienna, Austria. Right after getting out of customs, you will need to make a decision on how you will get to where you are staying. The Vienna airport is actually kind of far from the city of Vienna. Warning, taxis and Ubers are very expensive in Vienna. Other options are the bus or a train. All over the place in the airport, you will see these green signs for the CAT. That is the city airport train. That costs about 15 euros per person. I suggest you instead follow the red signs for the OBB train. The OBB train leaves Vienna every half hour and only costs five euros. So now you owe me a hot chocolate because I just saved you some money. Turkey? That is just like, just like Mexican food. Yes. Like, what is it called? I forget. There's this entrance. One. Interesting. There's a bottom floor called K. I don't know what that means. Probably basement. And then E for entrance. And then no first floor. Well, there's a first floor, but it's got a key on it. And second. And I think D means the ceiling. Instead of a hotel, we opted to rent a small apartment. This was 100 euros a night, which was much cheaper than a hotel we could find, and it allowed us to cook and clean and even had a washer for the clothes, but not a dryer. The apartment was in the Tabor neighborhood of Vienna, which is just across the river. But public transportation in Vienna is good, so we could still get to wherever we wanted to go. There was, however, one interesting thing we found about our neighborhood. They lived here. Yeah. We found another plaque just down here. The one you were telling me about it, yeah. yeah. I didn't see it. <laughs> we found out another interesting tidbit when we were walking by the other day. When we were walking back to our apartment, we found this interesting plaque on the floor. And it wasn't until I Google translated it back inside the apartment that I learned that this neighborhood was actually the old Jewish ghetto. And so what we've learned is from here, this is where the Holocaust started. And so in every- Austria. In Austria. In yeah, at least Vienna. This is where the Holocaust started in Vienna, Austria, which is where pretty much the Holocaust did start because that's where they started well, rounding up people. In Germany too. Right Austria right. was the most populated center for Jews in the 1930s. Okay, it is like 8.30 in the morning here in Vienna and our first thing of the day is to find a grocery store. So this is going to be an adventure on going to the grocery store and hopefully we can find our way there. It's all big high-rise apartments here in Austria and they have a trolley system that I have a seven-day pass for. But check out the cool stuff on these walls. That's pretty cool. It's like some kind of mural up there. I don't know what this building is, but it says 1633. 1683. I don't think this building's from 1683. I think this building's from the 60s. But wow, that's pretty cool. Just everything here in Europe is like way older than us in the United States. I see a market across the street. That's a good sign. Maybe that market might be able to help me. I don't know. We'll check it out. Right around the corner is a Mexican food place. <laughs> that's, that's kind of cool. Complete with Frida Kahlo. <laughs> Came all the way to Austria <laughs> to see a taco place. Eating out in Vienna can be expensive, so we cooked sure. a lot in our apartment. This is a supermarket. The two main so grocery stores are Billa and Hoffer. If that Hoffer lo logo looks familiar to you, yes, it's Aldi's. Only in Austria they call it Hoffer, not Aldi. Do you Aldi. think a euro works? I have no idea. It's I have coins. That's why you know you're in Europe, because you can get real Kinder eggs. Not like the fake kind that we have in the United States. Those actually have toys inside of them. Wow, there is a lot of chocolate here. This chocolate aisle is huge. Grocery stores in Austria were smaller than I was used to in the USA, and it was kind of a thing that you were supposed to walk in only one direction. I often accidentally annoyed someone because I had to walk back and find something that I had forgotten in a different aisle, and I didn't want to do a whole yeah, circle. Yeah, but then down so there that kind of got chocolate. confusing. Lots of different sliced meats.
right there, there's sushi. And a really big fish that, I think that's a mackerel. Or maybe that's a trout, I don't know. Lots of different bread here. All the different bread. Um, the Pringles. cracker. There's Pringles. We had those in Estonia. They were good, the classic paprika ones. Despite our minor confusion, we were able to find our groceries and cook some meals at a tournament. Schnitzel. Schnitzel. And spätzle. And spätzle for dinner. Mm -hmm. That we made in our little mm -hmm. apartment kitchen here. Well, made is a strong word. Reheated. Re reheated, okay. That works too. <laughs> for transportation, I had a seven day pass that I got with the Wayne it's mobile stopping. app. The pass got me anywhere in the city on public transportation except to the airport, which as I explained was a separate ticket. The center culturally for Vienna for me is the Opera House. Not only is it a stunning building, but it is also an important central location. Many of the important buildings in Vienna are in walking distance from the Opera House. One thing I had heard a lot about Vienna was the Sacre Tort. The Sacre Tort is a famous Viennese food. Basically, it's a chocolate cake. It was created in 1832 for a prince by a guy named Franz Sacker. So off we went to the Sacker Hotel that had a very large egg in the lobby, and the cafe was very, very red. They went all out with the Kaiser Franz Joseph ambiance. The Sacker Tort was okay, but I didn't get why it was so special. First, I don't like fruit and chocolate, and second, it was really dry. I mean, I like chocolate, but just not chocolate and fruit together. Luckily, they serve it with whipped cream, but even then, I didn't understand the hype with the Sacre Tort. As far as Viennese desserts go, for me, it was all about a place called Demel, which is a pastry shop right outside of the Hosburg Palace. Cakes here are so pretty. Not to mention the store isn't so bad. So many pretty things to see. Wow. Glad we came in. In addition yeah. to pastries, Demo is also known for its chocolate making and also for its live demonstrations of making a dessert called Kaiser Smarin, which I'll get into in a different video. That's chocolate fun. bar. Well, I want to get a big chocolate bar. Like Under, there, this one's 15. What's the difference between the two, though? The, the size. Oh, well, that's chocolate. I don't know what chocolate is. But that's, they have lots of, like, over here. These are 13 bucks for either dark or milk. Dark seems like <laughs> what I would want. But they've got a couple different the chocolate at Demo right is amazing. But the real reason why you want to come to Demel is because you want to try the apple strudel. Some hot chocolate, some square donuts that I cannot pronounce the name of, and the apple strudel. The apple strudel looks the best. The vanilla sauce, yes. Yeah, vanilla sauce there. You can see the vanilla bean in there, but it all looks perfect. It's finished here at Demel, and it has been great. Definitely, if I had to choose between Demel or the Sacre Tort Hotel, I would definitely try Demo. Demo has the better of the two hot chocolates. It was the clear winner here, so it was really good. Demo is a little bit more expensive than the Sacre Tort Hotel, and probably less famous, but it is, in my opinion, better. Not far from the Opera House is Albertina Platz, which is home to a big art museum, which has a strange entrance the locals call the diving board. The square also has a bunch of coffee houses, a very popular hot dog stand, and a very moving memorial to remember the horror that was the Holocaust. Vienna before World War II was seen as a very tolerant city. There were many different religions operating in Vienna. Many Jewish people lived in Vienna. There are two different Jewish museums that talk about the history. If you pay admission to one museum, you get entrance into both museums for up to seven days. The Jewish Center Vienna was very interesting because it, in the basement they have an excavated ruins of an old synagogue, which just shows to me how Vienna is a city that literally has many layers of history. 
Okay. Swedenplatz is a square that sits next to the Danube okay. River that was named okay. after Sweden as a thank place. you for helping yeah. Austria after oh, World War I. Place. It's kind of interesting to see all the modern buildings on the other side of the Danube River. Today, Swedenplatz is a busy transportation center. Several metro and trolley lines come to this square. Which means there's a lot of people, so that means there's some really good Vienna fast food nearby. All I can say is Vienna mustard is the best. Mustard and a sweet mustard, and then you have horseradish and bread. I also enjoyed something called ice. Now we're gonna try out some ice, which is ice cream. That's this gelateria. And see what kind of ice cream they have here. Let's see. Since 1886, it says it's pretty old. Vienna is a city that can meet you on many different levels. If you want regal, there are many palaces. I kind of lost track of them all, but I will say that the big three are the Hofburg, the Schönbrunn, and the Belvedere. There are also amazing churches and different squares to discover all throughout the city. Probably my favorite part of Vienna were the parks. I love how there was flowers almost everywhere and just people out in the parks having conversations. This is the monument dedicated to Strauss and the Amstadt Park. We are here, Mozart statue, very famous. We learned yesterday that he was more appreciated here in Vienna than he was back in his hometown of Salzburg. Here is where he really made himself more famous. I will be releasing other videos about specific plans and places in Vienna. If you were interested in learning more about Austria, make sure you subscribe because here at the Pedrosa Travel Channel, we are always in some random place every week. And remember, adventure is out there. Okay, so it's the end of the day. Almost back to the apartments now. It's a little bit raining. And as you can see, I did not bring a coat. So I'm a little cold. But I'll be okay. Just very cool looking at all the buildings here. All these apartment buildings look all fancy. So it's kind of cool here. But it was a great day today. Saw lots of cool things. The Hofburg Palace was amazing. And I had to survive a little bit without a jacket. But other than that, it's okay. I made it, so it's all good.